Let's pick up on line three and talk with Frederick in the district as we continue our conversation this time with D.C. Police Chief Kathy Lanier. Frederick, thanks for your patience. Hi, Frederick. You're on the air. Frederick, are you there? Um, I think they should get more police on the street. What Are you comfortable telling us what neighborhood or what part of the city you live in? I used to live, I used to live in South Fees back in the day. Do you still live in the district? Yeah, they need to put more police on the street and get the guns off the street. I agree with you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, you know, the neighborhood by neighborhood, we try and deploy police officers um, based on what the community wants, what they what they ask for. I mean, we're we're pretty sensitive to not every neighborhood wants the same type of proactive policing and patrolling and all those things. And so some communities really like foot patrol officers, and they're very effective in some neighborhoods. Not as visible as the marked cars with the lights on. Mm -hmm. But uh, if they're more effective and this is what the community asks for, this is what we give them. I um, mean, I think that really benefits all of us because the community is comfortable with that and we gain a lot of information that way. So um, the level of visibility really is dictated by the community. We try and make sure that we don't um, push policing styles and tactics on to neighborhoods that they're not comfortable with. Agencies around the region were searching in, in over the last day or two for a gentleman named Adrian Daigle from Daigle. Louisiana. He was apprehended, I believe, in Jessup. Uh, can you tell us uh, what the what, what can you tell us about the? Uh, I, I, there seemed to be a sense of urgency about that uh, suspect or sure. gentleman. I, I can only tell you what information passed through uh, MPD. We did put out a uh, lookout uh, for our folks and did ask the press to cover this as well. We were notified late in the evening that this person had made. Uh, threats and um, maybe in or around the DC area. So, um, with that information, we put, inf put this information out to our officers in the field, obviously for their safety. Uh, and then we asked that the, the uh, local press cover it as well because typically uh, people who watch the local news will call in if they, they see some. We did get some tips in uh, based on that. Um, but within I want to say four hours, five hours of us releasing our lookout information, uh, he was apprehended uh, up in Jessup. So um, very quick turnaround. Typically once we get that type of information, it doesn't take long to turn those things around. Tomorrow, I believe, you're participating in a press conference involving uh, or that centers around a use of force mm -hmm. report. Can you tell us about, uh, I mean, I'm sure <laughs> the, the bulk of the information will come out yes. at the same time for everybody tomorrow. but. Um, what is this? Pro I'm, I'm, I don't know a lot about this process, the use of force report so process. It, it really, what the point of the review was back uh, in '98, so uh, the district um, entered into a memorandum of agreement with the Department of Justice because, as you know, in the late '90s, the police department had a reputation for a very high number of fatal police shootings, a very high number of uses of force. Um, then, uh, incoming Chief Charles Ramsey. Uh, signed an agreement with the Department of Justice for us to make sweeping reforms in the agency. Um, so this is the first kind of check back. Now we were in that agreement for over eight years. Um, we were able to end that agreement shortly after I took over as chief. And so this was the first time that there's been a look back ten years now we've been out of the agreement. So there's no obligation for us to stay uh, inside of all the terms of that agreement. It was about 123 paragraphs in that MOA. Um, but they wanted to see how many of the reforms we made what was the durability of that reform? Did we, are we still a police department that has uh, compliance with best practice for use of force? And um, overall, the, the, the details of the review is a 330-page report, but the um, overview of the report says, yes, we are still in, largely in compliance with everything, all the reforms that were put in place, and still a, a best practice city, um, knowing that use of force issues in policing is on the cusp of probably a 30-year shift in what we've done uh, and, and po possibly going into a new new era on that, but it's a it's a very comprehensive review. So this sounds uh, like a like a, a, a general sort of a global assessment of of where things stand in terms of the a agreement and the things that the city said it would, that the department said it was going to do. Right. Because when I first saw that there was going to be a report and a press conference and the the focus was use of force, I thought, oh, something happened. There was an incident, but no. it doesn't sound like no. this is incident specific to one. The, the title thing. of the report is durability of reform, and it really is to see for law enforcement agencies that went through this reform process over the past 15 years, how many of those agencies still have 
policies, training, and uh, practices that are, are considered best practice in use of force. And, and we get, you know, I think the outcome of this review is that we are still one of the best practice cities uh, on use of force. Can you talk about the robbery task force that you've put together and what you hope uh, they bring forward? Sure. Um, so, you know, we have different crimes that pop up from time to time, if you remember the cell phone issue years ago. Mm. Um, and we analyze our biggest crime challenges um, on an ongoing basis, and we have to adapt our strategies to deal with what our big challenges are. So we, realizing that the robbery issue had shifted um, to a, a manner in which it would be critical for us to have uh, teamwork here, so the Metro Transit Police being involved, uh, Metropolitan Police being involved. Uh, we've now asked Prince George's County, who's also going to join in on the task force, to, to be involved, um, along with um, having prosecutors dedicated and assigned to the team. So we have to be agile and flexible in, in dealing with uh, robbery patterns as they shift. Um, so this allows us to very quickly um, adjust to what is a new kind of emerging robbery trend where there's uh, several people in a group that are snatching cell phones or in some cases assaulting people and robbing them of cell phones and purses and, and things like that. Um, so all of us working together, so far, very, very good success. I almost forgot, and I'm glad it finally it, it re-entered my mind, I almost forgot to ask the most important question of the hour. If I laboriously dig and shovel and clear oh. uh, the spot around my car, is that my spot? I get to, I own that spot, right? I, that spot should sit there and wait for me to come back. This is like the, <laughs> the news of the hour, I, and this, this question it just keeps coming back. People keep, you know, it's, well, I got a text from a colleague, I'm not going to identify him, but he, the, the, the long and short I think I know who be, the colleague is, I'm not going to blurt his name out. Uh, he, uh, he seems to want his spot back when he returns from home, is, so is the takeaway. You know, I have to say, you know, I address a lot of ways. <laughs> Police cannot uh, do anything about bad behavior or bad etiquette or, you know, uh, things like that. And, you know, if somebody shovels out a spot and leaves that spot, in terms of police response, there's no legal right to hold a spot. It's public space, so it's really not a police issue. But I will say, we, we really can't police people who just have bad behavior. <laughs> <laughs> um, I read something that said that the that uh, I, so the, uh, the DC uh, police union is under new leadership, and one of the press reports that I read suggested that the rank and file wanted to be more in and. and uh, I, faulty preparation on my part. I forgot to write down the new okay, FOP you. person's name. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Matt Mall. He's Matt uh, Mall. the new, going to be the incoming chairman. So, so one of the press accounts that I read in re doing research said that uh, the rank and file wanted more working with the department and not headbutting. Is yeah. that a fair takeaway? I, I think the, the membership overwhelmingly, this was a very high turnout for a vote uh, this time, so I think the membership spoke loud and clear and Matt Mall and his team ran on a platform that everything doesn't have to be a fight, it's not always a confrontation and it, and it doesn't always have to be attack and criticize it. We can do more if we work together so we are so looking forward to him taking over April 1st. Uh, I have about 30 seconds left. Friday night's Caps game against Anaheim first and the storm was coming and people are trying to figure out how bad is it going to be, what's the timing, etc. Try to get the game in, but not jeopardize people. So first they moved the game, and then they canceled it outright. Uh, were you concerned when it, it first appeared that the game was going to be on, but at 5 o'clock instead of the usual? Well, I think they made the right decision, first of all. I, um, as we were watching the weather reports and then watching the actual radar with the storm coming in, I think all of us, our perspective started to really change. And, and uh, you know, I think our biggest worry was we weren't going to... We, we assigned personnel to help get people in and out of those events on a regular basis. And I, I didn't think looking at that storm, I was going to have a lot of people available to help get them in. So I think they made the right decision. Great hour, great conversation. Thank uh, Chief, thanks for, uh, for your time. And I hope you thanks and Thanks for your the, patience the in getting us here. In, in, yeah, I hope that uh, we're always delighted to have you here. And I hope that uh, the men and women in your agency are able to get some rest and, yes. uh, and, and, and Thank uh, you. for it to come soon. Thanks, thanks. and We'll see you next month. Right. D.C. Police Chief Kathy Lanier. We'll step aside. We are back, though, with a program note after this. Thank you.